Welcome everyone to this new episode of Nuclear Jimmy here on Curie TV. I am very excited to announce today's guest visiting us again, Dr. Fans from Vancouver Traditional Hospital, Dr. Tracy from Vancouver Change Hospital, and last but not least, Mr. Rodrigo Paul Tarantino, or Mr. RPT as his friends call him. Dr. Friends, welcome to the show. Hello everyone, hello Nuclear Jimmy. I feel honored that I'm back on this show more energetic than ever. Dr. Percy, thanks for coming. Welcome to the show. Hi, everyone. I'm happy to be here. Glad to see you back, Dr. Fence. I hope your opinion has changed meanwhile. Looking forward to some good discussions with you again. And last but not least, Mr. RPT, it's always nice to have you. Thanks for coming and welcome to our show. Thank you, Nuclear Jimmy, for having me. Um, I'm very interested to hear the discussion today and see what has been done during the last year. Uh, from your group and this team to help me and all other patients. Okay, looks like we will have another lively discussion here. Today's topic of the show is whether we should move beyond that 23 grade limit for kidney absorbed doses. We won't have our beloved myth or fact game today, but we have not been idle. Mr. RPT has agreed to let us join him on his most recent virtual appointment with Dr. Percy, who is being treating him with radiopharmaceutical therapies at the Change Hospital in Vancouver. Let's get started and play that first video. Hello, Mr. Rodrigue Paul Tarantino. How are you doing today? What brings you to Vancouver Change Hospital? Um, hi, Dr. Percy. My friend called me um, RPT. I was wondering about these new FDA approved radiopharmaceutical therapies. Um, and if you think dosimetry uh, can help me to modify my treatment and you are willing to go beyond 23 grade dose to the kidneys. Glad you're asking. Of course not. These limits are so well established by Dr. Imami's publication dating back to 1991. And even better, the value itself comes from work dating back to 1968. Um, wait, wait a second. I mean, uh, uh, you, you mean you adopt something that is 55 year old? I mean, yes, time. absolutely. It's like old wine, the older the better. Hmm. Okay, I hope nobody's drunk here. Uh, but, uh, it, but this is science. Even the moon landing happened after that. And everyone that wrote that paper retired 20 years ago. Well, you know, we took what was there and people from external beam radiotherapy had this nice value at hand. Are you sure? I heard external beam world has had major improvement and they have a lot of doubt about those limits. Updated absorbed dose limit for external beam radiation is overdue, let alone RPT. Hmm, that's a good point. We haven't updated these dose limits yet. I guess I'm a bit confused. Of course you are. I think what we need now is some more explanation about the words that you use, like this dose limit. Yeah, of course. I mean, this is easy. See, like Newton said, this is an apple, which you now irradiate homogeneously, and we achieve good dose coverage of the apple. The 23 gray stated by Dr. Imami and colleagues refers exactly to this, a homogeneous irradiation of both capels, I mean, kidney, apple, over five weeks. Oh, you're comparing apples with kiwis. And even worse, you are mixing external beam radiation with radiopharmaceutical therapy. Imagine a kiwi. Oh, let me show you a kiwi. This is a kiwi. Yeah, look how heterogeneous it is. Those seeds are just like local dose deposition by radiopharmaceuticals. Look at that. It is heterogeneous. Hmm. I see that kiwi now. Okay, let's pause there for a moment. Wow, what an interesting discussion, Dr. Percy, Mr. RPT. I must admit, I was very surprised in that visit. Jimmy, you tend to be surprised all the time. Just enjoy a nice apple. I think the kiwi analogy was a valid one, though. I prefer not to be a fruitcake like some people. You think medicine's all about fruits, Jimmy? 
Okay, before this gets insulting, let's head back to the final part of the video. Then we'll get to my conversation with you, Dr. Fens. I can't wait. So I've been hearing uh, 23 gray is not 23 gray. Can you tell me more? You mean, for example, the fact that 23 gray kidney absorbed dose in yttrium 90 dotate has a completely different toxicity effect than 23 gray from lotetium 177 dotate? Yeah, what, what's best therapy for me? How you can optimize that? <laughs> Apple or kiwi? It's more like coffee versus alcohol. I mean, both affect your body, but in different ways, you know? Lutetium-177 has a different energy and particle range and half-life relative to Ritrium-90. So why should we treat both therapies the same? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, what you say makes sense. The only thing that's missing is that we have to find these dose toxicity thresholds to kidneys. Yes, we can. I heard we can use a simple and beautiful tool, radiopharmaceutical dosimetry. Yes? Yes, dosimetry using the agnostic principles opens up so many possibilities, and it allows us to track the doses delivered to our patients. We can therefore stop systematically under-treating our patients and safely increase doses delivered to many of our patients. Fully agree. Thank you for clarification, and thank you for all your help thinking about me and all the patients. Thank you for your visit at my clinic. I still love these food analogies. Let me give you guys a treat. I have this basket with apples and kiwis that you guys can enjoy. Dr. Friends, you seem to be having a meltdown. You and I also had an interesting conversation that, let's put it this way, did not end great. Let's see our video first, talking about those rates, then coming back to this heroic battle of apple and kiwi. I can't wait. Hi, Dr. Fence. Thanks so much for agreeing to meet with me today. I've been having some questions about radiopharmaceutical therapies lately, and it's always very nice to discuss with you. You're always a calm and world-renowned person, so thanks again for allowing me to share some of this time with you and being my show. Welcome, Nuclear Jimmy. Happy to see you at our hospital. What can I enlighten you with today? Okay, Dr. Fens, I was wondering about the inherent differences between external beam radiation therapies and radiopharmaceutical therapies mm -hmm. in terms of dose rate. Could you tell me more about that? See, Nuclear Jimmy, even though dose rates in RPT are over three orders of magnitude smaller than dose rates in external beam, I don't think this will cause any differences. We're quite far ahead by ignoring this fact. Let me be honest with you. That's not really what I was expecting to hear. My understanding is that high dose rates are considered to be biologically more effective in killing cancer cells than low dose rates for the same given amount of radiation dose, of course. Yet, you seem to be suggesting that using the same absorbed dose limits, if any, is the way to go. It looks like I'm missing something. What am I missing here, Dr. Fence? Nuclear Jimmy, chill. Your background is in knowing how to calibrate your voice and talk in front of a camera. I've been in this field since you were probably crying your mama's arms. I've treated hundreds, if not thousands of patients like this, okay? So you performed dose symmetry on all those patients and you made sure their dose limits were below 23 gray? No, Jimmy. I saved on a lot of patient discomfort and unnecessary imaging. So all absorbed doses were below 23 gray? Yes, I'm pretty sure. Okay, let, let me get this right. Yeah. So in order for you to not hit those dose limits and to not have to do some extra imaging to measure the absorbed doses, you undertreated most of your patients. Jimmy boy, this car has no space for another babysitter. Oh, it's you again. I recall you had a similar wisdom last time you were in this show. Jimmy, I recall I was very patient last time, like I'm being with you today. Anyways, we already talked about that, but let's go back to the new discussion. So you have treated thousands of patients without knowing how much absorbed doses they were all getting. My issue, having gone through and consulted a lot of literature and people in preparation for today's interview, is that we should administer high initial activities for radiopharmaceutical therapies to yield the same biological effect relative to external beam radiation therapy. Jimmy boy, let me just entertain that thought. That will result in higher absorbed doses to our patients. That's not safe. I didn't mean to put you on the fence, Dr. Fence. 
But that's my question and that's my point. Higher absorbed doses, because they're being delivered at smaller dose rates, would actually be safe and probably be the right thing to do for these patients. Jimmy boy, you're being a mama's boy and very perplexed. Just take a deep breath and relax. This doesn't seem to be going well. Calm down, Dr. Vance. But could you please comment on the observed differences in kidney toxicity between radiopharmaceutical therapies like, for example, lutetium-177 dotate used for neuroendocrine tumor treatment, or lutetium-177 PSMA-617 used for metastatic prostate cancer. And, and we can't even think uh, alpha-emitting radioisotopes like actinium-225 are coming as well. I feel there are differences in all these. Well, I think they're not really different. To be honest, we don't really see kidney toxicities at all. But Dr. Fence, what happened to Ichum 90 dotate? To my understanding, there was way more harm that was way more harmful to the kidneys. Okay, fine. But that's because they were different radioisotopes, therefore different spatial energy. That's exactly my point. That's exactly what I mean. The microscopic dose deposition matters, and that's what's different between Ichum 90 dotate and lutetium-177 dotate. Maybe even between those and lutetium-177 PSMA therapies. Bearing all these differences in mind, it is not surprising that recent clinical trials, and I'll give you some examples for like, the NETR trial uh, used for the treatment of neuroendocrine tumors with lutetium-177 dotate, uh, and the VISION trial, which used lutetium PSMA-617 for the treatment of metastatic prostate cancer, they, ha they have shown different results for kidney toxicity. Jimmy Boy, current regulations do not require dosimetry for those types of clinical trials. But, but I do know that there's a subpopulation of these patients participating in these trials that they, they, there was some dosimetry performed on them. So, so what you're telling me is that was this just unnecessary? Jimmy Boy, many patients also got a haircut, but that wasn't part of the clinical trial requirement. Okay, just because some of these hot-headed investigators did dosimetry, it's not proven necessary. But as a scientist, Shouldn't you be investigating that? Like, shouldn't you be just having conversations with regulatory bodies to update those regulations? Those symmetry calculations could probably guide us to the guide the field in understanding that kidney absorbed those thresholds in radiopharmaceutical therapies. I, I think we're getting to something important here, and I think we're discovering something. Jimmy Boy, isn't it past your bedtime? Next, you want to talk about differences in DNA damage between alpha and beta emitters? Why can't you stick to real science and practice? Oh. Dr. Fence, are you still there? Dr. Fence? I, I think he left. And I think he remote slapped me actually, guys. Uh, it's the first time in all the years that I've been doing this show. I don't know, I'm shocked. This is the first time that something like this happens to me. Dr. Fence, Dr. Fence, you're not coming back? Okay, I guess this is it for now. So since that moment on television, Dr. Fence and I have had a private conversation and have meant fences. I'm glad I was able to convince him to be here today. Oh, I'm delighted to be back, Jimmy. Let's share some thoughts and debrief. Dr. Percy, do you wanna start? Sure, look at Jimmy. There has been very few dose escalation trials executed to date, and we don't fully understand absorbed dose and toxicity relationships for RPTs yet. It's time for it now. Dr. Percy, at last, a word of wisdom, exactly. Well, Dr. Fenz, that's exactly what we need those studies. And there has already been some evidence for this. We seem to be in a bad loop. Yeah, I agree. And we should not confuse external dose planning with radiopharmaceutical dose symmetry. Do we really measure dose in external beam? It's a dose plan, a wish. But in RPT, we do measure the dose. It's the real dose symmetry. And of course, it's challenging. As you guys told me, micro-level events matter. It's heterogeneous. Biological ecosystem is different, but it's possible. And we should do that. And at the same time, 
not confusing that with external B, kiwi and apple, remember. Exactly, kiwi and apple, we should do better now. And I'm thankful to Dr. Percy who wants to help patients by moving beyond this fixed activity prescription. We want personalization. As a patient, I want to be involved in the process of decision-making. I want to be heard. I want to be partner in care planning. Tell me what's the probability of side effect if you go higher to the higher injected activity and let me decide. Let me decide if I can tolerate it or not. Be my wise consultant not a totalitarian guardian. I'm your patient and let me be the partner in the process of care. And by the way, I'm thankful of Dr. Fenz who teaches us all how not to be a doctor and how not to treat our patients. I agree. It is important to move beyond existing dose limits. And after these discussions, I believe that the current dose limits for RPTs are outdated and that both retrospective and prospective dosimetry and outcome monitoring are desperately needed to move beyond the drawbacks of just adopting the limits from external beam radiation therapy. Yeah, but for you to escalate doses to investigate when toxicities actually occur, that could harm some patients. Dr. Fence, again, the best way to avoid any toxicity is not to treat the patient at all. And we need to understand the best way is by finding that balance and communicating that with the patient. Let the patient decide and participate in this process. And I'm sure with your help, we can go beyond. So in the middle of this show, I started feeling that I need therapy to treat my total annoyance with all of you. And I would tolerate any side effects. But I do think now that there are some good points uh, uh, being said here. I have to do more thinking on this. So I'll be back, Jimmy. I'll be back. Okay, Dr. Fens, Dr. Percy, Mr. RPT, thank you very much for being in our show today. For everyone at home, thank you very much for watching us. From our interviews and discussions today, it does seem like there's some work still need to be done to optimize radiopharmaceutical therapies. But hopefully, the billion minds of the, of the people in this field will join efforts to make personalized medicine a reality. If you liked our show, please subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much.